The third area of impact that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ left his mark was on his friends. Now, let's ask an important question. Who was the best friend of the Prophet ﷺ? If we're to ask ourselves this question, who was the best friend of the Prophet? What would you say? Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, Aisha? No. The best friend of the Prophet ﷺ was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was most close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Abu Bakr was very close to the Prophet ﷺ. And it is well known that at the time of the death of the Prophet Muhammad, Abu Bakr, he exhibited great leadership qualities. However, one should never assume that he was not overcome by sadness, that he was not overcome by emotion. However, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he came from the madrasa of the Prophet ﷺ. He was trained by the Prophet ﷺ. So he was able to overcome his emotions and overcome this great, great difficulty by what he received from the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ from education. However, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he wrote some poetry about the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, the eyes are crying. The eyes around me are crying, but it doesn't bother me. You know, usually when you hear, if you have small children, you can relate to this. They keep crying, 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 crying. It starts to bother you. Here Abu Bakr is saying that eyes are crying around me, but it's not bothering me at all. Why? Because this crying is haqqul sayyidi, is the right of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Meaning, with the death of Rasulullah ﷺ, these eyes who are shed and tears around me in abundance, doesn't bother me. Why? Because it's the right of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And then Abu Bakr, he begins to describe his friend. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said the possessor of great blessings and wonderful behavior and great fidelity and morality. The one at the moment of severe difficulties will be the first one to run to you and help you. This is how the Prophet Muhammad is being remembered by his friend Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, how is it that we can have any fun or establish any type of happiness after your absence? Indeed, I would rather be dead and join you and be with you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Of course, he's saying this out of his love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But a quick question. This is how Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu remembered his friend, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How long was their friendship? Some of the scholars of Sirah say that Abu Bakr and Muhammad alayhi salatu wasallam were friends as children. All the way up until the age of 63 years old. From that time, Abu Bakr had been with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And how did he remember him? Now what about us? If our friends were asked to witness for us or against us, maybe they'd only been our friends for a few hours, for a few weeks, for a few years. What type of witness would they give? What would they say about us? Oh, he liked to hang out in the mall. Oh, he liked to talk bad about people. Oh, she liked to talk on the telephone with such and such. Oh, they were doing this or that. Oh, he didn't pray. Oh, he didn't go to the masjid. Oh, he used to make fun of the sheikh. Oh, this, that, that, that. The scary thing is that many times we see our friends as being those who are the best supporters of us. But remember, if you are engaged in something bad with your friends, they're going to be witnesses against you, not for you. When you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those same friends that you're hanging out with and doing things, they're going to come. And Allah is going to ask them, مثلاً, was such and such in the club? And you're going to say, I wasn't in the club. And then here comes your friend, the guy that picked you up to take you to the club. And he's going to have no choice. He's going to say, yeah. He was in the club, Ya Allah. I saw him in the club. I'm the one who picked him up. So we're doing these bad things together. We're thinking that, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, we're Muslims and we're together and we're doing these things. But it's going to come back to haunt us. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, الرَّجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ That the person is on the religion of their friend. Let's look back. Let's look at our friends. What type of legacy are we leaving amongst them? The fourth area of impact that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ had was on his enemies. Abu Sufyan, he became a Muslim on the day of, of the conquest of Mecca. But before that, we know he was one of the greatest enemies of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He plotted to kill the Prophet ﷺ and his wife even maligned the body of Hamza radiallahu anha. However, later on, alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. Abu Sufyan subhanallah, after the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, this person who was an enemy of Rasulullah ﷺ, he mentioned the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ by saying, this Prophet who removed doubts from us by what was revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he guided us. So never fear as long as the Prophet ﷺ for us is a guide. 
And then Abu Sufyan, he said something remarkable. He said, فَلَمْ نَرَى مِثْلَهُ فِي النَّاسِ حَيًّا وَلَيْسَ لَهُ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ عَدِيلُ He said that we never saw anyone in the life of the Prophet ﷺ who was like him. And there is nobody from the people who have died who will be equal to him before his death or after his death ﷺ. Today Muslims, we face many difficulties. But there is a difficulty really that has to shake the hearts of every concerned Muslim. And that is that for many years, Muslims have been criticized since the time of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. But in recent years, a new area of criticism has appeared which really should cause us to worry. And that is that the morals of the Muslims are being questioned nowadays. Never before in history were the morals of the, the Muslims questioned. Abu Sufyan, he was an enemy of the Prophet ﷺ. But when he was asked, is this person a truthful person? He said, yes. When he was told that his daughter married the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, in that state of being an enemy of the Prophet, he still said, I could think of no one better to marry her than the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Recently in my community in the States, uh, something happened which really shook me and caused me to think about this. Uh, a non-Muslim neighbor who lives pretty close to the masjid where I live, one day she came home and she found a car parked blocking her driveway. She found a car parked blocking her from getting into her own driveway. Immediately she went to a building because she said, I know that these people are the ones who had to do this. What building do you think she went to? SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. She went to the masjid. First thing that she thought of, the first thing that she thought of was that what? I'm going to go to the masjid. She came to the masjid and unfortunately, guess what? There was a brother with his keys saying, you know, I'm sorry. Islam means peace. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of organization. Come on, akhi. You have to show it with your actions. So now, this era of the ummah, we are in danger because the morality that we possess is being questioned. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was accused of being a magician. He was accused of being a poet. He was accused of being a madman. But no one ever attacked the character of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This represents a first. That this ummah now, people are saying that we, we throw our shoes in front of our house, we're not clean, we don't smell good, and so on and so forth. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله We should feel some ghira. We should feel some honor and some jealousy. Subhanallah, the morality of the Muslims is being brought to question.